Hey guys, this is Chris. Welcome to another week where we're breaking down some techniques. Usually I don't do techniques on my channel. We're usually here for sparring tactics and strategies, but as the coronavirus pandemic is breaking out around the world, they're canceling tournaments. And so I don't really have that many fights to cover. So I thought what would be best for you guys is if I could help break down some of your questions that you had from previous weeks. And we're gonna get into those right now. Today, I'm joined by my little brother, Kyle, again. We had just finished filming for our studio, the online classes. And so he's gonna be helping me out today. So the first question I got asked was, how do you negate a hook kick using a cut kick? Hook kick will come out like, let's say I know Kyle likes to use his front leg a lot, going like that. And so what I'm gonna be waiting for to use a hook kick is if he lifts his front legs, that's usually coming for the hook. And so what you wanna do on Coach Kyle's side that you wanna do a really, really hard cut. Because if I hook kick, you don't forget it. What it does is, if you hit with a hard, hard cut, it throws off my body weight, and so I'm unable to do a hook kick. How much do you weigh? 68. He's like 68 kilograms. I am almost 90 kilograms, and even with a hard cut, if I'm spinning and I got one leg in the air, it's not gonna stand a chance against a hard cut. I feel like they might spin. Something I'll do along with leaning back while I'm cutting is I'll mix this up with really hard cuts. And so that kind of keeps my opponent guessing, and it's very deterring for someone who's trying to spin against you if you have a variation of a long cut and boom, a hard cut where they're not really sure if they're gonna get the get the cut kick they want out of you to do the hook. Um, for so. the second question I was asked is, is it easier to cancel an open stance or enclosed stance? Generally, I would say that's, that's preference, that's up to you and your weapons. I personally like to cancel in open stance and here's why. If I cancel in closed stance, if I were to cancel and let's say Coach Kyle's able to slip his leg through, there's this whole area that he um, is able to score on versus if you slip the leg through, in the back, there's only like, if I'm cutting at you this way and the leg slips through, there's only a small minimal area and if it hits my, me in the back, there's not really that many sensors there. And so, or at least it's not generally scored on as in the front. And so, switching to um, open stance kind of eliminates like almost the whole target for him, in my opinion. And so, when I go for a cancel, it's, boom. It's a lot easier for me to lift and just be looking for this leg that I may have come around the top because a majority of Taekwondo players right now, they have a front leg hook kick, but it's not as deadly or not as well trained as Taekwondo round kick. Like which one's more common? Taekwondo round kick, right? So if I'm on this side, it's a lot easier for him to, boom, um, hit me that way versus trying to score this way on my backside. So I personally like to cancel this way, boom. But that's also because after I cancel, generally after I cancel, I have a back leg round kick that I like to follow up with. So I would say it depends on you. I personally really like canceling an open stance because I feel like it eliminates some of the targets. It's a little bit easier for me to watch the foot. And the one available option I'm not blocking, the front leg hook kick, is not, is not generally thrown as common as of right now. Yeah. One of the other questions I got asked was how to throw a twist kick. And I generally don't really use this technique that much. I've used it in training matches a couple times and I've scored like maybe once or twice. So I'm not really the most qualified person to answer this because I don't use it often, but at least I'll give you guys what I know so far, okay? So a twist kick generally comes up oh, like that and it's supposed to score that way. And so a lot of people, or at least what I was taught was a lot of people think the force is going sideways. So they're really trying to turn it to the side. But what we found was also viable was here, all, you almost want to just lift like a front kick. Boom, and it's gonna hit. So one more time here, boom, just like that. One of the ways to practice this is just having pulled like a front kick, pretty much. So this way, and here, bounce and boom. See so if you can just flick going upwards. Try and hit with this part of your foot. So if you can, twist a little bit, sure. But in general, the force is, instead of just going, um, completely sideways like that, it's just a diagonal, slight diagonal up. You don't have to worry about swinging it to the side too much. Just like that. Mm -hmm. That's a twist kick for the outside. The twist kick for the inside the clinch, this is something that Lee Dae Hoon uses. Um, I've seen Sinden use this. I've seen a couple other GBR players use this. I personally have never been really good at this, but I can see why the application is there. And so if we're looking inside a clinch, so pretend we're in the clinch situation now. Here, generally people when they're shooting to the body, go that way, right? This is the normal kick, or uh, the knees bent a little bit, boom, like that. And so the twist kick is useful because it goes in the same line, like last week's progression video, it gives the same look, but a different target. So instead of here, 
boom, it goes there. And so the target is relatively the same. Um, we don't have a camera that can zoom out as much, so I'm not super in the clinch with Coach Kyle right now, but the general idea is still there. So instead of here, boom, the twist kick is used like that. The knee looks the same. It's harder for your opponent to react. All right, and so the last question I'm gonna cover today was I've been asked by a couple of people what my warm-up routine is. And so um, it is kind of extensive. I'll show you a couple, couple of uh, seconds of me doing the drill. Um, and then you guys can try it out at whenever tournaments resume anywhere in the world. Okay. I'm not sure the official name of all these stretches. I just do them in this order because I find that works best for me. Legs at 90, uh, knees at 90, hip at 90. And I do this way a couple times and then I go around five or six times. The next drill is sit up. I have my feet at 90s here and then this way and I take my chest and I move forward a little bit. And other side. Here and forward. After that, I generally go to other stretches. So here, I take one leg out, and I lift, and then pull the chest, and the other side. Here, legs up, drop one leg, and up, drop the other leg, and up. And so I'm slowly warming up my body a little bit. If I'm feeling really tight, or if it's really cold at the tournament area, I'll leave one foot on the floor, arms out, and a couple of these, and then a couple of these, and then one leg, and then the other leg. And then I'll generally do that on both sides. And then uh, generally after a little bit of doing that, I'll do a, like a really, really like light mini warm up. And so what I'll do is I'll just jog back and forth. So I'll make sure I go forward, backwards, side step, a bit, and yeah, carry up these. And then I do carry up knee high. This side, and then I go to low kicks. Then I go low kicks with a knee high, so then knee highs, and then after that I'll go into dynamic stretches. So I'll I'll go slow first. So generally, I'll Superman, knee to chest, elbow to the floor, twist. Over, push my glute, stretch that a little bit here, turn, and, uh, and after that I'll generally start doing some leg swings. So a leg swing is just find a wall or a partner and up. I'll do about 10 forward, 10 to the side, and then 10 backwards. And then after that I'll do some glute activation drills. So here, one leg up, 10 of these. After that, I'll generally start going to knee highs. So the knee, my knee high series is 10 forward. So 10, and then I'll jog to the other side. And then I'll do 10 this side. And then after that, the next progression is side, front, side, 10, and then other side, 10. Then this side, front, side, in, front, side, in. Uh, one, two, so one, two, three, four, five, six. I do about 12 and then I do threes. So one, two, three, one, two, three. Um, I do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And then I do five. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then after that, I'll go uh, down back. And then the next one, forward, two, five, other side. Uh, after finally after doing all the knee highs, all that stuff, um, then I'll start doing air kicks, really light. So here, front kicks first. Um, then I work my way through round kick. Then head round kick. Then axe kicks. Then out and crescent kick. Then in out crescent kick. My crescent kicks aren't beautiful. <laughs> Front leg cut, then I'll do a couple of those, front leg round. And all this is pretty much doing is just double checking everything to make sure everything's feeling proper or feeling correct. Front leg face, front leg X. I'll do some punch. Um, and then I'll spin, do some spins, so back kicks. Or hook kicks. 
just to make sure I'm feeling good. So I do about 10 of those. Um, I'll rest a little bit, another set of 10, and then another set of 10. And then the drops are all the way up, and then hold. Up, hold. Up, hold. Um, to be honest, I started doing those really recently and I felt like it helped me feel faster at the tournament. And so I like the way it made my body feel. I'm not sure if that's psychological or not, but I like the way it made me feel. So I do those before I start doing some harder kicking. After I'm finally done doing all that, after I'm doing the pogos and the drop and the drops, I'll start, I'll start doing some hard kicking. So I generally do about five reps per side, but I try and like full blast on the pad every single time. So right leg back, I'll start this way. And like in the tournament area, it's just, Ow! Really, really just trying to put all my energy out. After that, I do a couple of series with targets. So after I'm done doing the full blast kicks, I'll move into a little bit more of a cardio that, and it helps me alleviate my uh, first fight jitters or the, the adrenaline jump or that, heel, that heavy feeling you feel in your legs. I found doing a heavier warm up like initially helps me personally um, get past that first fight a little bit better. So I'll do three sets of these where it's here. I do 10 of those, I rest for 10 seconds, I do another set, rest for 10 seconds, do another set, and then um, I have them hold for a back kick, and then, and then I do 10 jump back kicks, um, I rest for 10 seconds, 10 jump back kicks, rest for 10 seconds, 10 jump back kicks, and after that I'm usually breathing kind of hard, and, and then I usually stretch, or I'll do some timing drills, or uh, some play sparring with whoever's at, with me at the tournament, just to feel ready, and by that time, I just kind of relax and wait for my fight. And that pretty much sums up my warm for tournaments, guys. All right, so I am planning to do another Q&A sometime in the future, probably soon. That's probably gonna be the last one I may do like uh, for free. I'm starting to build a Patreon now. Um, I'll let you guys know that's fully up and running. I'm still trying to figure out how this site works. It's a little bit confusing for me, but hopefully I can get some more value to you guys that way. And, hey guys, I almost forgot. If you guys have any fights that you want me to cover, professional, your own, someone else's, of any fights you want me to cover, shoot them in the comments, shoot me a link in the comments, or uh, get in touch with me, and I'll be more than happy to break those down for you. While there's a lull in fights right now in international tournaments, there's no Grand Prix, no qualifying tournaments, um, I'm happy to look at any of those fights. So feel free to send those my way. But until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and see you guys next week.